my name is Susan Kraft, and this is Talk Art, a program funded by the Society of Local Artists, SOLA. SOLA meets once a month, usually in the Palo Alto area. You can find out how to join SOLA by going to our website, svlocalartists.org. Today, we're going to talk to two talented and lovely artists, both are good friends of mine, whom I met while they showed their incredible art at the former Art 21 Gallery. Diane Dunwoody is known for her color blasts on canvas and a ceramic art business that went a little too far. Will Maller is known for keeping today's top plein air artists out in the public eye by orchestrating juried plein air art shows as well as applying for and placing in the country's, our country's top regional shows. We're going to start with Diane Dunwoody today first. Diane, now I have here on my notes that Oh, we've got several things to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is what is new on Art Horizon for you? What's been going on lately? Art shows and... Lots of art shows. Not a lot of uh, painting, though, huh? I know the last, the last few months, gosh, the last six or eight months, really shuffling, shuffling work around to different exhibits and shows and galleries, um, uh, which is all very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Six or eight uh, months, that would put it back to <coughs> where are we now? We're in... Uh, I know it's going to be taped and it's going to be shown over and over again because we're really popular, but today happens to be early June in 2008, so this is the sixth month, so all the way back to November, you've been showing art in different places? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's I do, November. I'll do, uh, you, know, you know, a painting here or there, a commission, I do commission work. Okay. Um, but um, it, it, t it takes a lot of time yeah. uh, doing an exhibit. Um, setting, you know, setting the work up and, and all the, the, the marketing publicity materials and so forth. And you do and, your own marketing? And getting, um, I do have a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, but you, you have to provide your help with, you know, the, the information and yeah. uh, put that together. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work um, exhibiting work. Now wait, <laughs> it is a lot of work exhibiting work. It is, it's, it's really, I mean, half of, you know, working as a uh, um, as a professional artist, mm -hmm. painting really is is only half of what I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other half is is putting together, um, you know, marketing materials or uh, setting up a, an exhibit or you know, getting and, and work to a gallery. Excuse me, but I I, I want to just want to clarify because a lot of people may not know this, but what when you say marketing, it's not just marketing like you're marketing for a, a shoe store or or, or or a restaurant. It's you're really reaching out to the people that have already purchased from you or have come before and want to see your work again, whether they buy or not. They just want to see your art. And they want to be where the other people are that they maybe have met during these shows or talk to other people that are that are interested. So they need to know what you're doing and they've got busy schedules. So they just you need to personally reach them or put information in the newspaper where they're going to come across it accidentally or they're going to be looking for it. So you have to let people know, right? Uh -huh, so you send, them out car you send out cards, you put articles, you put... Uh, in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and you know, the community where, where I'm showing needs to know that I've got a, an exhibit going mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah, and staying in touch with, with customers, potential customers, mm -hmm. people who have seen my work. Um, that weren't ready to buy yet. Yeah. Really love my work, and which happens and often. And then you have to take art down, and you have to pack it up, and make sure that it's not going to be ruined. And so that's a lot of work. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to look at the work that you've been showing over these last eight months since November, and it's going to be um, your uh, the first group of art. Could we um, could we have the art up on the screen, please? There we go. This, okay. This, so this first one we have here is we've got combinations. So this first group we're looking at is is the work right is the work that um, you know af after doing a lot of shows and exhibits, I say, I've got to get back to painting. Mm -hmm. so and we're and so this is the work that uh, this is a new series that I've I've just started on um, combinations, and it's about combinations of um, you know s you see you see the the circles against the squares mm -hmm. against the, the geometric. Um, um, it looks like you have opposite colors coming yeah, on here. Yeah, we okay. have contrasting colors, um, and uh, and then the color combinations. I love mm -hmm. color, and I love playing with color, color combinations, and um, um, these are actually the first the first paintings um, I've done that I thought about them before I painted. 
Oh, really? So normally yeah. you just, we're going to look at some others uh, in a few minutes, a few seconds actually, what you used to do, what you had in the gallery. And those are much looser and they have the same palette though. So yes. these you mm -hmm. had to design because they're, well here behind you, uh, because they're geometric so you have to know what you're going to put down, where you're going to put it. So, um, so let's talk about how you went from, the, went to this from where you came from. Can we put up the other series? There you go. Okay, so, so now we're gonna, we've got maybe 10 of these. So let's just talk about them as they come through like a slideshow. Just, we're not okay. gonna talk about individual ones. So now this is much looser. We've got circles and almost squares. And you um, still have, you still have, I, I still always started with um, um, uh, blocks of color. Uh -huh. um, and, and these, this series of paintings um, are, um, I, I call them new visions. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I painted them in an abstract expressionist sort of way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really admire uh, the abstract expressionists from the 50s, um, Hans Hoffmann, Ed Reinhardt, Mark Rothko, um, 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 those people, Helen Frankenthaler. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they painted, you know, you know, and I painted these just, I'd, I'd uh, go into the studio, prepare, get my, what colors am I going to work with today? Pull out those colors, and I just start applying color on canvas. Mm -hmm. um, and these these were done, you know. I'd, I'd put blocks of color down, put and and I work in uh, acrylic, so mm -hmm. uh, it dries quickly. Sometimes I'll use a, a hair dryer, dry a layer, put on some more it's color. It's a good trick. And I did the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's I, I love acrylic. I love working with acrylic, and I can also apply um, uh, paint on in thick. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, like that. Really I like that. Yeah, it's great. Um, that I love texture. that three dimensionality that you put in there. So these are just expressive. Just they're colorful. They move. Um, and um, well, I lived with your art for um, about a year or two, and I loved your art. And uh, Thank you. we had a, you're welcome. And we had uh, many people that came in just to see your your stuff. I did well at your gallery. You did. You <laughs> I did, did very well. Yeah, I know you were. You're one of the you know, many artists that was uh, not too happy when I closed, and you know, but life goes on, and nothing is yes. forever. So, yes. um, which speaking of nothing is forever, you had a previous inca incarnation in. I think we're going to bring some up here. I'm going to show you here incarnation of art before these beautiful pieces that we had up here, and uh, and those that was pottery. Yes. And when you yeah. when I look at your pottery. And I look at your art that you brought into the gallery, the ones we just saw, that mm -hmm. really loose, and the circles, those, the circles you would go round and round with the brush, you could just see it, right? And then when you showed me your pottery, which is very, I don't want to say common, but you see this kind of pottery all over, that kind of style of, of glazing in many different pieces out there in the market because your, your, your style was copied. But you well, were the one was, yeah. that started this style, I and did. you'll see it at Macy's, you'll see it at Crate and Barrel, you see it at you'll see it at Walmart, you'll see it at, at World Market. In fact, there's a World Market cup in our kitchen here at the studio that has your signature style of painting on it. It just is because flattery is what well, imitation is the, is the yes, most sincere yeah. form well, of flattery. I had to take it as a as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> but you did everything with, uh, in a small. You had a small. Uh, I started Company. out. Yeah, I started out working um, as an as an artist in and street designing. Fairs. Yeah, doing street fairs and, mm -hmm. and designing my uh, my own wares and uh, got picked up by a sales rep, which took uh, uh, the dinnerware. Well, actually, a, a lot of things wholesale, and um, couldn't produce the um, everything myself, so I had to hire help. More mm -hmm. kilns, more help, more kilns, more space. Another thousand square feet of space. Wow. Um, pretty soon, I had. Um, um, a lot of kilns and a lot of, uh, you know, sales reps all over the country, and we were shipping out pallets of uh, dinnerware, and um, it, it was a unique, it was a unique glaze application and uh, colorful. People liked it, um, but unfortunately, we got knocked off, and, and it happens. And like you said, it's it, you have to take it as a compliment. Well, let's bring up um, a couple of these. Uh, we've got a couple of these. Uh, can we have them up on this on the uh, screen? This is a short slide show because we only have two pieces. Yeah, so this was before digital, so we don't. You yeah, don't have yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. These were in the early '90s. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the teapots, teapots, the limited edition teapots, I, I made um, myself um, um, by hand from slab. Um, um, anyway, I, okay. I, I love them. <laughs> okay. And, <laughs> and the then, next ones that we're going <coughs> to look at here, the plates. Can you bring the so plates up, please? So the plates, the plates that you see there are um, the first. The, the beginning of the Sonoma dinnerware, 
Mm -hmm. Those were the first, um, um, the first colors that came out. We added pieces, you know, customers would call and say, I need a butter dish, I need a pitcher. The sales reps would call and say, Do you oh, make them? Well, now, yeah, and we would make them. Mm -hmm. And um, so you, what you told me earlier was that you would hand make them, and then that's you would make them, and then you would make a mold, and then we could then reproduce the mold. And we reduce yeah, pieces, the, the, we uh, pieces from all your the, mold. All the original pieces were handmade, and then molds were made mm -hmm. of, of those. So this is the only way mm -hmm. to make that many pieces. Yeah, of um, course, of course, and um, to have that handmade look. And, and also this, this so glazing, the glazing is by individual. The glazes were all done by hand. Mm -hmm. um, the, the color was applied first, and then the, uh, the, the clear gloss. Mm -hmm. that, that was our secret. The clear gloss, it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clear gloss was uh, applied uh, over that, and that gives it that depth. Yeah. And um, and then as time went on, we we added more colors. That's what you know the public wanted. Okay, yeah. the colors that are in this year are teal and whatever, and um, um, and and the um, you know they they went from pastel colors to to bolder. Well, and, and so. I and I see when I when I saw your pottery. Now the one that we just showed you, like I said, I only had. You only gave me two images to put up on the screen because of times have changed, and this isn't something that you have available. For, right. You know, yeah. yeah but anyway, I, I've seen your work, and I've noticed it in. I, I used to be into gourmet cooking, and I saw this kind of work in Gourmet Magazine, and you told me it was also in Sunset. Well, we were we uh, uh, Dunwoody Ceramics mm -hmm. was was featured in uh, Sunset Magazine when they did a. Um, a layout on dinnerware, mm -hmm. handmade dinnerware, and also uh, Bon Appetit did a spread on us too, mm -hmm. um, which was very exciting. You always, oh, you yeah. know, it's like, uh, oh, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm there. I'm, yeah. I'm in the magazines. Yeah. I'm there. And the, and, the, uh, and the colors that I see, the palette that I saw you working in your, in your ceramics, I've seen in your artwork. Maybe that's why I was attracted to your artwork because I called you up out of the blue. I saw you on the web and I called you up. You and what I saw was your flowers, which I could, if you could bring the flowers up, please. I'd like to see that there's two images we have um, that they're going to show us in a moment. And the flowers are what I saw first. And this kind of, there, we've got this piece up here. What I saw was something that I think brought back memories of looking and admiring your dinnerware. I, now I know. I didn't know it then. Uh -huh. I mean, I called you up and I said, <coughs> hey, uh, I'm going to be over. Uh, I'd like to have your art in my gallery. And I showed, told you who I was. And, and I think the next day or within a couple of days, I was on my way. <laughs> yeah, it all happened <laughs> Very quickly. quickly. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And well, what? luckily you had other times like this had happened to you, because especially because you were done with dinnerware. Things just kind of moving really quickly. So, um, But you were very... You were very receptive to it. I was very happy to hear. Yeah. It. So, um, anyway, do you want to talk to us at all about your um, about your flower work that was up for a moment? <laughs> I don't know. Went out. Well, there we go. We're going to bring this piece up now. Uh, flowers. Mm -hmm. um, your representation. Well, represent. Yeah. Represent you know, I, I, <laughs> I can't speak. As I was. Uh, I'm a speaker um, again. Painting. Speak. I've, I've painted Bad. for uh, many, many years, and and um, I've always liked abstract, you know, the colors, you know, playing mm -hmm. with color, and. Um, and it was actually my sister who said, I, I need a painting for the, I'm redecorating the, you know, my uh, family room and we need a painting and I love flowers. And I was Aww. like, Karen, I don't do flowers. <laughs> <laughs> you can do, I don't do flowers. I so. Um, okay. so I thought, you know what? I'm going to do my, my version of flowers. And, yeah. and um, so these are my abstract flowers. And I love doing abstract flowers now. Mm. And um, thanks there you sister. go. <laughs> thanks to your sister. What's your sister's name? Karen. Hey, Karen. <laughs> thanks for this. <laughs> Um, well, I think this is about all we can do with your work today on Talk Art. Thank you very much. Thank for you for having us. me, Susan. You're Thank welcome. You very much. You're welcome. And I still love all your work, and I wish you the best. And Thank you. Uh, good luck with your new series. Thank you. So uh, now we're going to take uh, a little bit of time and talk <coughs> to Will Maller. Thanks for coming yeah. back on the show, Will. You were here once before. Yeah. Thank you for having me again. You're welcome. And uh, today we're going to talk to, let me go over to my Will Maller notes. <laughs> here we are. Okay, Will. Well, now, Will, as I mentioned before in our, <laughs> I throw all my notes around, uh, in our intro to everybody who's watching, uh, Will is a plein air artist, and he also um, uh, helps other plein air artists get uh, some work yeah. out into the public. So, and you're going to show us quite often. I've got a couple of your, your uh, flyers here from shows you've been in, and they're pretty prestigious shows. Flap them around here. Um, talk to me about them. So first, we're going to talk about 
the oh. Putney River art piece that got into a show and you won right. first prize. First prize. That's true. The Putney River piece was done in Vermont, and mm -hmm. we were painting with uh, Richard Schmidt and Albert Handel in uh, Putney, Vermont, on a very mm -hmm. special time. And it happened to be the painting of the week and painting of the day. We were and there it fortunate. is. Is this the piece? Let's me, uh, let me see the piece. <coughs> Putney up River here. should this one here? be. That's the correct piece right okay, there. Okay, good. Very right. good. It also was included and invited to show at the Triton Museum this January. Right. And the Triton Museum is in, in Santa Clara, Santa Clara. California. Santa Clara. Okay. Um, and uh, it was, was a very successful show, and it was uh, just absolutely a lot of fun to be there with it. Very good, very good. Uh, and you had other shows, other pieces that we actually have a slide of, and um, we have something something called Morning Shadow and uh, Altima Creek. Altima? Alameda's right. Creek, right. So the, let's do Morning Shadows okay, first. Morning, Here it comes. Morning Shadows is up. Exactly. The Morning Shadows piece was done on location. It's a, it's an 11 by 14 plein air piece down at Villa Montavo. Very good. It was juried in along with Coyote Creek and Alameda's Creek as part of a three-part piece that was juried into the History Museum's plein air show, Breath of Plain Air, which will run, actually it's going on now and will run, I believe, through uh, the end of sep or mid-September. This is 2008. Um, so then, uh, now let's go back place. to the morning shadows piece that's still up on the screen uh, here. Is it still? Yes, yeah, on the screen still. So this, you told me earlier that this is the style of work th where you're moving into. So I want to get exactly. over to that later. It's going to come up on this. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But I just want to point out now that this is a stunning piece. The the color and the shape and the value um, that you use to to create this piece of art. Is um, is spot on, spot on. and Thank people you. have recognized it, and you've gotten awards, and you've been invited. So I've, exactly, I've been very fortunate. I've, I've uh, gotten some awards with this piece. The first mm -hmm. there, <clears throat> and it's going on to a national show uh, later this fall, that it was juried into. Now we got. So I'm going to. Uh, I would like to bring up some other pieces mm -hmm. uh, that. Um, and congratulations on on the Thank morning you. shadows and. I'm, very happy to see this working for you. Uh, you've been working so hard at, at moving out into the yeah. into the world with your wonderful art. Um, and I might add, Will's been painting since he was a little kid. So um, I'd like to look at if you can bring up some other slides of Coyote Creek and uh, what else do we have here? Um, to be Alameda's Creek. Alameda's Creek. We've got two more uh, plein air paintings to bring up on the screen. There we go. So this is Coyote Creek is up on the screen right now, and um, and this one is plein air. Yes. All right, okay. That is and also then, plain air. And then the other uh, one I want to talk about, or I want to show actually, is uh, Alameda's Creek. Creek. Did we bring that up yet? No, that one's Gold Country, uh, Sundown, which is beautiful also. Um, but let's just move on. Then. I think what I want to do, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got such a limited time. There's so much work to look at of yours, uh, Will. Um, I'd like to talk to you about your nudes. You're also an excellent figure painter. Yes, that's... Drawing, uh, um, Thank you. Drawing Consensus. artists. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a couple of your pieces right, on the set right. with us, and we've got one that we can show on the um, on as a slide also. So the one behind me, I don't know if we can get this or not. Um, if it's going to get over here, right. Oop, there we go. There we go. We're getting in there. There we go. It's beautiful. Look at this piece. Oh my, what a lovely yeah. piece. Now you won first yeah. prize at the Sola. Yes, uh, I did. show right. just last month. So, yeah, can, we all, can you talk about this a little bit? bit? Sure. It was also uh, included into a San Francisco figure show and was an award winner there. This was done in one of the uh, Palo Alto Art Center's open studios where you can come in and uh, contribute to the uh, model fee for the evening or the afternoon, and um, which is what I routinely do. I've always felt that figure work is basically. Um, uh, translates as um, it's uh, like doing scales when you're a scales musician. Scales when you're a musician, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was actually a uh, 10 or 15 minute pose. Um, and I got caught. I got caught tangled up in the hair and spent a lot of time doing the hair and then realized I had very little time to the end of the pose and Massed a, massed a pile of the charcoal and then dragged it down the right side. I love it. With your hand? And, oh, and the hand, oh, and it, it yeah. hit it just yeah. right. And it's I perfect. thought, fine, yeah. it, I'll live with this. Yeah, so. and, and we do, just like the, uh, musicians yeah. doing scales or just tinkling yeah. around, one out of a hundred is a 
masterpiece, right? right? Exactly. And you might have 20 yeah. that are, are good enough to sell, and yeah. the rest of them you just think, well, let me redo it or toss it, especially yeah. this kind of work. Yeah, I'm very um, happy with that. And uh, me too, and me too. And now there's another piece behind piece, you. Right. If we have this guy over here, take a look at it. Um, I don't think we have a slide of it. Well, this is a male nude that was done again, I believe, at Palo Alto and was also um, one of the featured pieces in San Francisco Gallery for a while. Um, and that was literally, like, uh, I believe, a one minute sketch and on, from a model that was in motion. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he looks like he's in motion. And, uh, I don't know if you can get this at all, but anybody of our, any of our cameras can get so this. During that but period of time, that model was, was in motion. Oh, that's why you've got the arms. You can see the and arms are going right, around. Right. Yeah. So you've, uh -huh. you've got very little time to, uh -huh. to capture something and I, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we started at the top again and yeah. laid in massive charcoal and then added highlights in line to offset mm -hmm. it. You know I've noticed that when, when you're, when anybody's doing figurative drawing mm -hmm. it's important to have the head be a right proportion oh, relative absolutely. to, very, to very the rest because otherwise the whole balance of the figure will depend on where it starts the with the head mm -hmm. and then of course down through the spine mm -hmm. and the angle of the hips mm -hmm. and the angle of the Mm -hmm. Now the shoulders are particularly important. It establishes the proper balance of the figure. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful well piece. Done. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> and uh, I'm, I'm just, just so blown away by this. Did we? Can we? Can we bring up the the um, the slide again of the his other piece that we have up? Uh, what's it called? Break time. Break, break time. time. No, we didn't look at there as break yeah. time. Break time's up on the screen for our viewers now. Yeah, this was very very quick. This was like a 30 second sketch, and it was at the end of the second. pose. Wow! And, uh, wow! And, and you can I just hit the darks. I think when you start any any art project, you start with yep. the darks. So yep. I I tried to nail the darks, and then uh, featured a few lines, and I and I was able to capture the balance and a particularly yep. sleight of hand with the ear, <coughs> gave it a, the head. A, and an attitude mm -hmm. that made sense with the proportion of the, of the rest of the figure. It's just so, gorgeous, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you bring that one into um, into Sola. Into we have Sola? Every okay. month, everybody <laughs> right, should know exactly. we, we bring in. Sure. You, you don't know. You don't know this. You've been. You I live do, so I far do. away. Yeah. yeah. But you, you've been able to do this. Will once in a while comes in. We have a monthly uh, artist juring of the artwork. So then at the end of the year, we tally up the points to see who gained mm -hmm. as the most points, and then whoever gets the most number of points wins a sizable cash prize plus a ribbon and they have a, an award they can put on their resume that they've won the artist an jury. Annual. annual annual counting, oh. yeah. And we start counting in January, from January to January. So um, let's see what else did I want to talk about with you. Oh, yes, I want to talk to you about the future look of your artwork. Now, we already talked about that you were going to, uh, you plan on using the Villa Montavo Gold Country Sundown that we first saw. That's the right title, isn't it? Well, the Gold Country Sundown yeah. is a piece that was the, for the uh, People's Choice First Place Award winner, Napa Plain Air, juried Plain Air show uh, last year, a year before. Um, and that's the one that got some national notoriety. Um, I was very fortunate to mm -hmm. <coughs> be able to here? receive that one. Yeah. Receive that great, award. Great, great. Uh, your waterfall pieces are yeah. just stunning. In fact, the last time you were here, you water. had one on and you added a little more. We did, work right. On, yeah. We've since finished that piece. Mm -hmm. I should bring that in. But so what? Uh, so your future art plans and your show entry plans. What are you? What are your plans? What, tell well, me I what think they are. We're, we're, <laughs> I want to take um, notes because I want to follow your <laughs> footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thank ready? you, I appreciate it. Okay, here we go. We went through a number of years, um, 15 to 20 years, where I was away from oil painting for a while because of wow. uh, commercial interests and mm -hmm. commercial interest in doing uh, trade shows and, and conducting a design studio and a design business in the valley. Um, and coming back to oil, um, I struggled with it and, mm -hmm. and, and struggled to the point where you're almost blocked. And I think one of the ways to get through the block, um, if you keep working smaller and you keep working more consistently with more images rather than struggle with one image. Brought, one giant image. Right, brought me to plain air. It works a little bit smaller. You can paint on location. You can paint a number of pieces in a shorter period of time. But and you slowly thinner, start working through this. Pardon? They're usually thin. They're not really thick. People like to have it thick. Um, the th plain air pieces that I do end up fairly thick, actually. Mm. The, 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 the darks are always, in traditional oil painting, the darks are painted thinly, and then the lights and the... Uh, Right, the thick water, the boiling water gets done. Generally mm -hmm. painted down. Now, Morning Shadows is purely uh, painted on site in total in about an hour and a half. Gold Country Sundown, on the other hand, was 
mostly painted on location, and mm -hmm. then it was it was glazed and finished in the studio. I looked yeah. at it for a while and then picked parts of the picture and glazed it dark to push it in the background. Mm -hmm. And uh, that seemed to help that piece out quite a bit. Well, it's pretty clear these two are uh, the the morning shadows, and I keep we're yeah. pointing the things on the. You guys can't <laughs> see you. the things we, we're pointing on the table mm -hmm. here, and you can't even if I hold it up, you can't see it either. So I'm sorry. Uh, we should probably stop doing this because like Go back now, what you forth, said yeah. right here and what you said right <laughs> here, we're not going to tell you. We're going to keep it a secret. No, so um, the gold country sundown, the one that he's going to go forward with as a plan for the future right. because he's getting lots of awards and his yeah. name is getting out there and this is what you have to do if you want to be known in the art world you need to uh, to be recognized in in regional and uh, right. in countrywide um, shows that have some notes so this is like exactly. the 23rd show in New yeah. York or the you know the 15th show in Texas or something yeah. like this. You have something that it has some legs and it has them people pay yeah. attention to and the jurors are well known and the other artists that are in the show the are, are well known. known. The, so this uh, is what this is what art's been uh, art. This is what Will's been doing with his art. <laughs> the sister piece to the Gold Country Sundown was accepted into the Oil Painters Association show in Santa Barbara last fall. Very good. Um, Very good. So it gives it even more legs. When right. So so that, this this is image. basically if I if I could take what you're doing, and what you're doing also is to take a uh, uh, a page out of your workbook mm -hmm. to get yourself out there and people get to know who you are, and that is to um, just constantly go out there. So when you were doing your shows for your ceramics, you were in these shows and you would take on commissions. And when you were doing, and you brought on people to help you grow. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing now is you're going to uh, to well-known series of, um, of shows and putting your best pieces, exactly. not gigantic pieces, no. really well constructed, small ones. You have to be able to recognize your own work. Exactly. So getting people to look at it with you sometimes and doing smaller, yeah. smaller quick shows that are weekly or monthly in your local community will help you understand what you're doing right exactly. and wrong and getting some good instructors. So, so that's really important for the people. You know, if we've got other artists watching, mm -hmm. this is what you do to help get yourself situated and known in the art world. And then once you're known in the art world, then other people start to pay more attention because people who are collecting, they want to know if they're on the right track or not. You think we have a hard time figuring out for which mm -hmm. piece is better or not. Art collectors also have that problem and exactly. even worse. Mm -hmm. So they need to have other things tell them, like the number of awards right. you're getting. And we're done. Okay, folks, thank you for coming oh, thanks. in. Thank thanks, you for Susan. Susan. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you very much for having us. You're welcome. Hope you all got something out of this that I certainly did.